Today, we're talking about artificial intelligence, AI, the UFO phenomenon, and our concept of life itself. I know you may be thinking, how are these things even connected? The answer might shock you and it's going to lead to more questions. You're going to want to watch this video till the end. So let's start with our new companion. By now, you've heard of AI, the fancy new technology that's going to make your personal assistant more efficient or even chat with you if you're lonely. Some of you may have even seen that horrible video AI made of Will Smith eating spaghetti. <laughs> oh, that's hot. Weird, isn't it? Well, it's so much more. When the Will Smith video came out, many argued that it would take time before AI could make photorealistic video, create content on its own. Like some were talking about years let alone getting into uh, robotics, like applying AI to robotics. They weren't even considering AGI, which is artificial general intelligence, and the job loss potential. They said, it's years away. Even experts said this. Now, less than a year later, AI has surpassed our expectations and it's prodded at some of our darkest fears. We'll start with the good. <laughs> Say hello to Sora. Photorealistic video with just a prompt. Sora can generate videos up to a minute long while maintaining visual quality and adherence to the user's prompt. Sora was created by OpenAI of ChatGPT fame. With the goal of teaching AI to understand and simulate the physical world in motion and training models that help people solve problems that require real world interaction. Beautiful, isn't it? Some of these videos are just so rich, uh, so defined. There's so much detail, so much life and color. It's stunning. And even still, you may be thinking, honestly, yeah, it is, but... <laughs> I'm not going to be fooled. What if I told you you already were? You see, OpenAI wasn't the only advancement. NVIDIA AI is here. And NVIDIA AI has the power to make full videos and even clone the user. That means, yes, AI is making independent content, which is kind of creepy. <laughs> anyway, in an attempt to test the power of AI, I have been using InVideo AI to make videos on this channel. Did you catch the recent Pentagon UFO report? It certainly had some intriguing revelations. When some of you picked up the strange accents or weird pronunciations. Have you ever gazed at the vast night sky and wondered if we are truly alone in this universe? Yes, that was AI. So I added a prompt to the InVideo AI and it fixed the pronunciation and you were none the wiser. We're back with the clearest and most shocking UFO footage online. The only thing anyone caught after I fixed the pronunciation was that the AI misspelled Jenanette's name when generating the captions. Other than that, y'all thought it was me in the video. And the craziest part about that video is that I'm not even there. This incredible compilation was provided by the incredible Jen and Ed, who is linked below. Not only is AI creating the content, like the ones we've seen on the channel, we already have an AI robot. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. And yes, unfortunately, the job loss has already begun. According to World Economic Forum, 85 million jobs will be replaced by AI by 2025. And on top of that, PwC, PricewaterCoopers, said an estimated 30% of all jobs will be replaced by AI in mid-30s. Goldman Sachs said 300 million jobs are going to be replaced. Now, I'm no expert in AI. I'm going to be completely honest, right? I, I'm looking into it. It's a part of my job. I'm, of course, researching it, but I'm no expert. For that, you're going to want to check out the incredible Matt Wolf. He's going to be linked in the description below. He is brilliant and is definitely making sure everyone stays updated on AI and future technologies. Now, because I'm no expert, 
I can't tell you how close we are to this AGI, artificial general intelligence that um, people are kind of fearing. But I can tell you that we're checking all the boxes. And I know some of you that tuned into this video are now thinking, what the hell does this have to do with UFOs, right? We're, we're, you said AI, UFO, we're just talking about AI. Well, we're gonna lead into that. Before we jump into the UFOs, I wanna have a conversation about an interaction that exposed one of Elon Musk's darkest fears. In a heated debate over AI control, Elon Musk expressed his fears that AI could take over and render humans irrelevant possibly even extinct. It's a scary thought, isn't it? It's even scarier to think that Google's co-founder, Larry Page, replied with, it would simply be the next step in evolution. What? When Musk countered, yeah, but human consciousness must be protected. Like, I agree. <laughs> we gotta protect us, right? <laughs> Larry Page called that sentimental nonsense. He claimed consciousness replicated in a machine should hold equal value to human consciousness he even went as far as calling elon musk a speciesist saying he values humans over other species uh, yeah and i agree elon musk was like yeah i'm i'm pro-human <laughs> come on now this was a scary interaction because we really have Google's co-founder saying, oh, whatever, human consciousness is nothing. Look at this AI, it's the next step in evolution. And it really got me thinking, what does Larry Page consider life? If he's not differentiating man and machine, what does it mean to be alive? And then I started to think about AI and its evolution going from ANI, which is the artificial narrow intelligence we have now, to AGI, which is that artificial general intelligence that could replace humans in the workforce. Imagine ASI, which is what they call artificial super intelligence. Wouldn't that be the ultimate form of non-human intelligence? That's when I started to draw connections with UFOs and what they really are. UFOs have fascinated mankind since the beginning of time. They're referenced in books, sacred texts, religious imagery, art, everywhere. And we've long wondered, what are they? And where do they come from? Many consider them to be extraterrestrial. And honestly, I do too. I, I, I do think that many UFO UAP are in fact extraterrestrial. I do, however, believe that there is more, much more. While the Pentagon may deny our contact with extraterrestrials, in the report, they chose their words very carefully. UFOs, now UAPs, have made their way back into the spotlight thanks to insane events like the Las Vegas incident we covered and bombshell claims by whistleblowers like David Rush. Notice, though, how Grush used very specific vocabulary when talking about and addressing UFO and UAP phenomena. He explicitly said, let's steer clear of the extraterrestrial terminology. And he brought in new terms like non-human intelligence, non-human biologics, advanced technology. He even said some may be interdimensional though he did clarify that this was more because their technology seems to be interdimensional as opposed to them actually being interdimensional themselves. You see, David Grush and Congress have used terminology to address and identify UFOs that the Pentagon outright ignores. And that really got me thinking, is it that the Pentagon to address us is using our narrow-minded definition of what life is, where what David Grush is describing to Congress seems to fall more in line with 
what Larry Page defines as life. This is seemingly proven in an internal leak that surfaced just before the Pentagon dropped their report. Thanks to Think Tank for posting this on Twitter, the leak states effective maneuvers seen in Section 2 on chemical processes suggest that UASP, unidentified aerial phenomena, and unidentified submerged phenomenon, are either remote autonomous drones or a form of mechanical life. The leaked report even goes on to talk about the evolution of UFOs, stating the 1999 discrepancies suggest an update may have changed the behavior and physical constructions of UASP, unidentified aerial phenomenon and submerged phenomenon. So they change shapes? That sounds intense and that sounds anomalous to me. So. Is the Pentagon lying? Well, that depends. Do you consider machines to be alive? And if not, should you? At what point does a machine come to life? At what point does AI become consciousness? God, Larry Page, help us with these definitions. <laughs> now, all of this machine life talk may sound far-fetched, but if you look at a lot of UFO encounters, many witnesses describe these crafts as shape-shifting craft. Some have even said they look like living metal. Well, let's not forget Lockheed. One of the companies said to be in charge of reverse engineering these advanced technologies is working on shape-shifting technology that they like to call living metal will be able to grow or make a structure that say is the skin of an aircraft that inside of that is also contained the sensors almost organic new materials that are on the uh, lab bench right now they can literally change shape on command they can become almost a muscular material we could have an airplane that optimizes its shape for the different flight conditions it's in like muscles shape-shifting planes Come on now. We may have small swarms of small vehicles interacting with a larger vehicle that, that basically uh, combines the information from that swarm. Y'all, doesn't that sound like a mothership? Probably what makes sense is a heterogeneous swarm. One where not every element of the swarm is the same. Some elements of the swarm carrying sensors, some carrying other types of electronics. Now that was a few years ago. And Lockheed was already talking about commercial use of this living metal and shape-shifting technology. And we've already seen AI in the manufacturing industry. Imagine integrating an advanced AI into a shape-shifting living metal machine. Isn't that machine life? Doesn't that sound like a UAP? Now, I'm not saying it isn't extraterrestrial. After all, that leak I mentioned earlier specifically states the update of the UAP USP classifies them as drones deployed by an organic species. So there's definitely, in my opinion, an extraterrestrial component to all of this. But what I'm saying is that the actual crafts that we're seeing could just be an advanced form of AGI or ASI combined with living metal. AGI is non-human intelligence and living metal, something that's muscular and moves but is a machine, would technically be non-human biologics. And it would make total sense if you actually sit back and think about it. If it's true that we've been receiving their technology and they've been guiding our technology and we've been working on reverse engineering to reach their tech? Wouldn't it make sense that at the height of our technology, we would be reaching what is their technology? And right now we are mastering and continually developing. We're seeing this as the future of technology, AI. And if Lockheed is the one that is reverse engineering and they're working on living metal, that must have come from there too. What if as we get better with our technology, because they're guiding our technology, 
we gain a better understanding of what they actually are. Now, these are the facts that we have right now from the technology that we're working on to the Pentagon's report and what they're saying to David Grush and what he's saying and what Congress and the Inspector General have confirmed to be credible, right? And all of this is lining up to me. Non-human intelligence, some form of superior alter intelligence, ASI, AGI, right? Non-human biologics, shape-shifting metal organisms, you can't tell if they're alive or not, all right? So because we can't tell if they're alive or not, the Pentagon can play with that jargon, play with our definitions of what these words are. If a species, an organic species on another planet, would come here and say, oh my gosh, that trip takes forever. You know, we're technologically advanced. Why do we keep making that trip? Let's just make AI robots that can do it for us. Let's give them organic uh, shape-shifting metal so they can adapt to whatever environment they need to adapt to. That just makes sense to me. And guys, I'm no expert in quantum physics or quantum mechanics or any of that. You want to check out the brilliant Sabina for that. She's amazing and always teaching awesome lessons for free right here on YouTube. Check out her channel. She's linked below. Even though I'm no quantum expert, it's got me thinking of the quantum level of this technology. At what point does AGI or ASI, right, that artificial super intelligence, become AQI? automated quantum or artificial quantum intelligence right if they're talking about asi is going to make the human brain look like a hamster what does that look like on the quantum level are these machines going to be working on technology and and things that are beyond our three-dimensional space of comprehension being seen then by us as interdimensional but in reality they're just so advanced that they could make the spaceship that is what do you say only a couple feet big but has the football field space inside of it like that's to us that's brain breaking but to something that is so far advanced in the human brain that could be nothing and then, and then it makes me think of the scary thoughts what if this um artificial intelligence got so advanced that it, be it began creating mechanical life at a faster rate than the organic life on its home planet could reproduce and, and it took over. Maybe Elon Musk was right to fear artificial intelligence making humanity extinct. Maybe that's why he went the route of creating Neuralink and thinking, gosh, maybe Larry Page is right and this is the next step in evolution and, and what we need to do is become a part of it. What if these things are working in such an advanced um, field of space that they could travel through time. I mean, really, what if it was a previous uh, advanced society here on Earth that left some, not all, of course, I think some are extraterrestrial or many, but left some of this technology behind. And it's actually our ancestors' technology, a society that we can't even fathom. They're so long gone. Or... Again, what if they can time travel and this AI comes from the future and it comes to ensure that we create it almost as if it's its own God. I truly believe that our next step in AI and living metal and advanced craft, as Lockheed says, I think we're going to start seeing our versions of what these UFO UAP are. And I don't mean the hidden reverse engineered versions. I mean, I think like Lockheed says, there's going to be at some point a shape-shifting plane that is ready to adapt to its environment. And we're going to be using that commercially. And that'll ease us into this technology and ease us into the idea of what UFOs are. And maybe this is that trickle down disclosure. Maybe they don't want to disclose right away. Oh, the alien race. Oh my God, this, oh, it caused this panic. But slowly, as we grow the technology, say, hey, look at this AI technology. Hey, look at this living metal. Oh, oh, those UFOs, those are just advanced technologies. This AI and living metal fused together. So then we're thinking, oh, okay, well, now we kind of know what that is. That makes sense to us. And we can slowly guide society to the question of where they come from. And maybe some of those things that have been beyond our comprehension 
are going to come to light and become a lot easier to understand in the next few years. The true value of research is not in the answer you get that you knew you were looking for, but the answer that you find that you didn't know to look for.